Hi, I'm Nikki Jovakik from Lookup Strata. We're talking to 2025 Protection CEO Bob Epps and Account Manager Hayden Smith about apartment fire safety. 2025 Protection is a fire protection company that has serviced buildings in Metro Sydney since 2010. They give trusted advice to keep people safe. Their vision is to provide a long-term approach to fire safety. 2020 Fire have been working with Lookup Strata over the past few years to assist with fire-related questions from our New South Wales audience. And Rob Broadhead, CEO and founder, joined us for a webinar, What to Look For in a Fire Contractor, earlier this year. Today's chat is about fire safety in strata apartments, which is a hugely important topic. And this was highlighted by 2020 Fire's account manager, Hayden Smith, recently when he woke up to a fire in his neighbor's apartment in the middle of the night. Hayden's situation is unique as he's both a resident fire protection worker and in addition, an evacuation training planner. Hayden teaches people what to do in a fire situation every day, but how did that compare to the reality of a real fire? We invited him here to share with you what he experienced that night as a resident in an apartment fire, how his fire training assisted, and how the live situation differed from the theory. Thanks, Hayden. Thanks so much for joining us today. Appreciate you having me. Um, yeah, the incident took place a, a couple of weeks ago now and happened uh, during the night, so I was asleep at the time. Uh, we were actually awoken by the, uh, the young girl who was house-sitting for the owners. Unfortunately, the owners weren't even home at the time. Um, she had noticed the fire had started in the kitchen, um, and like anyone would in that instance, she panicked a bit and she started running out and knocking on other units' doors. So uh, my partner woke me up uh, at that stage. I'd looked uh, across the, the hall and saw that the kitchen had caught fire. Uh, so I guess, I, again, just lucky with my experience and knowledge, I instructed both of the girls to sort of head downstairs um, and, and for them to grab me the common area extinguisher uh, at the same time. So. By the time I'd gotten into the kitchen there, the, the flames had grown to probably in excess of six feet. They were taller than me. Um, the fire had originated underneath the kitchen sink. Uh, so luckily with the extinguisher that I had, I was able to extinguish the fire. Uh, however, you know, just the nature of where it was, the kitchen chemicals that it had already burnt out, um, it did create quite a lot of toxic smoke uh, and everything. So by the time the fire was extinguished, uh, the, the smoke that filled the unit was enough to set off both the, the smoke alarm within the unit and the, the common area detection system out in the lobby. Um, thankfully, the system that the, the building has does have an automatic fire brigade uh, alarm signaling equipment. So the brigade had been at, you know, uh, dispatched, uh, which was really good. Um, in terms of yeah, they were able to then get up and, and verify that the fire had been extinguished. However, just due to the sheer amount of smoke and uh, carbon dioxide in the area, there was there's quite a lengthy time that the fire brigade needed to clear both the lobby and the unit itself uh, of the smoke. Um, and yeah, so from, I guess the learnings from it, um, you know, we're, we're really just how quickly a fire can grow. So. We, you know, in the, in the weeks that have followed, we've been able to sort of work out how the fire originated. So the owners had actually taken the liberty of removing their hot water service unit, uh, the large one that they had, and installing smaller instant water boilers in their kitchen, laundry, and, and bathroom. So the young house sitter was uh, using the shower, so they had activated the system. The boiler underneath the kitchen sink had faulted and the electrical spark caused the uh, caused the fire in the first instance. Now, unfortunately for these owners, um, they weren't really to know, but the kitchen sink is also, underneath the kitchen sink is where you house a lot of your cleaning chemicals and dishwashing detergent and all of that. So uh, the resident at the time did, did mention that when she got out of the shower, she heard a lot loud bang and that's what kind of you know, forced her to have a look in the kitchen and see what had happened. At that stage, she noticed smoke coming out of the kitchen, uh, the kitchen cupboard underneath the sink. Uh, and probably the only mistake she made was opening that cupboard to see what was what the, what the issue was that obviously introduced a lot more oxygen to the fire and allowed it to flash over. So um, the things in terms of the building uh, that we noticed as a result of the fire uh, were probably probably two things. The, the, the building had a faulty mechanical air handling system. 
So when that when the detection system was triggered, that unfortunately went all into fault. Uh, so with the fire brigade trying to clear the smoke out of the lobby and the unit itself, um, trying to utilize the, the existing fans and push that area out through the fire stairs once they were cleared was just impossible. So the length of time that residents, especially from that level, were stuck outside waiting for the fire brigade to clear the smoke uh, as they had no assistance from the mechanical air handling system. Um, and then secondly, with the occupant warning system, despite um, you know, it, it, it activating, it just simply wasn't loud enough. So of the six units on, on level two, um, only the unit that was affected, obviously they were awake, they noticed the fire and uh, myself and my partner were the only ones that, that were alluded to it. Everyone else was asleep. So, you know, whilst they are able to hear the alarms when they're tested, uh, completely different story when people are asleep. So it's really important that, um, you know, what common common complaint we get from residents when there's false alarms is, you know, we, we believe our system is too loud. It's really frustrating. Can this be turned down? Uh, the, the biggest learn from it is just to remember these systems aren't designed to sort of be annoying whilst you're awake. They're, they're meant to alert you whilst you're asleep. So it's really imperative that, that you know, these systems are loud. So, uh, yeah, four units on the, on, the, on the affected floor. The residents were actually instructed to stay inside of their units because by the time they were alerted to the fact that there'd been a fire, there was too much smoke in the area to, to safely get them out of the building. So, um, yeah, that's my story. Okay, so you're you're trained. You talk to people every day about what to do in these situations, and then you're in the situation yourself. So, uh, how does someone handle it that hasn't like they've had sort of minimal training? They've had a few fire drills that they've been through, but they're putting that situation like what 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 could they do um, to quickly get the best result they possibly could? The best advice I can give, honestly, is to stay calm. Um, okay. I was lucky in the sense that, you know, being able to grab the extinguisher and put the fire out was just part of my background knowledge. Um, you know, a general resident or anything like that may not have that. Um, so the only offer, advice I'd offer there is, you know, if need be, consider your safety first. Get out of the building. Um, you know, these owners were, were lucky that, and the, the, you know, the fire didn't cause much further damage within the unit. But even if so, everything, all those material things are replaceable. Um, so yeah, in the instance that you're not sure, you know, keep calm and just evacuate the area and get yourself to safety. The fire brigade will arrive with their uh, their equipment and their PPE and everything like that and do what they're trained to do. Um, I guess the thing that I have benefited from is you know, a lot of experience and, and learnings from the industry that I've been in. Um, so I think it is imperative for, for all residents uh, or even business occupants uh, just to familiarise themselves with the use of portable fire extinguishers, how to safely evacuate a building, what to do in the event of a real incident. So. And I know for a lot of residents, it's almost like an abstract concept that they will be woken up in the middle of the night with a with a fire or dealing with a fire. So it's to make yourself aware that it could definitely happen to anybody and, um, and it could happen at any time as well. So, yeah, I'm sure that that's, um, yeah, people just don't think about it. They think they'll go their whole apartment life, which they might, um, and not be faced with that. But if they do, it's something that you have to really think quickly. Um, okay, that's really excellent. Thank you so much for that. And then, Bob, we spoke quickly. When I had a, a talk to Rob um, about about contacting you and having a chat with you, one of the things he did was send me through a, a few um, links to some videos about the difference between properties with fire sprinklers and without fire sprinklers. And we'll share those links below these videos when we, when, sorry, this video when we send it out to everyone to, to read so they can watch those videos as well. But um, if you've got anything that you'd like to add about what could have been done differently in the building or what what buildings can look at to make sure that if this does occur, there's minimum damage and, um, and, and it's dealt with in the best possible way. Yeah, I think there's a couple of messages here, you know, and, and I, I suppose the building is very lucky that Hayden was a, was a, was a resident there, otherwise it could have been a whole different situation and we could be talking about, you know, not just a loss of building, but a potential loss of life. I think, you know, and it, it also, unless you're in the industry, it's, it's very uh, difficult for people to comprehend that, you know, when, when you are taking over a, a, a renting buildings, is that you weren't sure that the building is compliant. It does have a current certificate. Um, so many old buildings are around or the buildings that have been turned into bed sits may not be fire compliant they may be cheap you know for rent and so on and so forth they may be affordable um but you know yeah i think it's it just drives home the message that you know cheap is not always best 
It definitely is investment. But also just don't be afraid to ask those questions of your landlord or your strata management company. I was even at a, at a meeting with a strata company yesterday that actually, as, as Hayden raised the point, who, you know, who wanted us to turn down the audible alarms because of the complaints that they have in the fire testing. It's, you know, it doesn't matter how, you know, it needs to be loud, it needs to be heard, you know, it needs to be compliant, and people need to be able to evacuate. And I know for, for years, you know, we've always talked about, you know, with, with people, if you see a fire, you know, make one attempt to, to extinguish it. it. It just goes to show that somebody even with Hayden's experience, you know, a, um, faced that, uh, you know, fire, uh, flames that were taller than him uh, and just the, the level of smoke, no matter how much training you have, you know, unless you are in, you know, the fire brigade, you would, uh, to encounter that sort of loss of oxygen, um, being sort of uh, overwhelmed by smoke, uh, the fear, the stress, uh, it, it, it is overwhelming. So the best thing for people to do, you know, is where they can, is to evacuate, save life over property. Okay, excellent. All right, well, great information. Thank you so much for sharing that experience with us. I think it's um, invaluable for our audience to, to hear about how it actually happens in a real life, life situation. So we thank you so much for, for sharing the information. Thanks for joining us for this educational session. If you gained value from the information, please like this video. You can also engage further with Look Up Strata by subscribing to our YouTube channel or by being kept informed about Strata news via our regular newsletters. Our subscribe link is listed in the description box below.